Good morning, everyone. Today is the last day of October. Anyway, uh, it's the Devil's Day today, Halloween. <laughs> anyway, hope you all have a good day today. Mark is going to be reading Arthur Pink's book, The Holy Spirit. He's in Chapter 14, Part 1. And, uh, this book is available through Amazon.com. Thank you. Holy Spirit, Chapter 14, Part 1. Chapter 14, The Spirit Comforting. The same work of the Spirit in the heart of God's elect is a gradual, progressive one, conducting the soul step by step the new method and order of the gospel of Christ. Well, there is no self, hyphen, condemnation, humiliation. There can be no saving faith in the Lord Jesus. You repented not afterward that you might believe him, Matthew twenty-one thirty-two, which is his own express affirmation. The burden of some sense of sin, which prepares the soul for the Savior. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Without condition, there can be no contrition and compunction. He that sees not his wickedness and guilt never mourns for it. He that feels not his filthiness and wretchedness never bewails it. Never was there one tear of true repentance seen to drop from the eye of an unconvicted sinner. Equally true is it that without illumination there can be no conviction for what is conviction but the application of the heart and conscience of the light which the Spirit has communicated the mind and understanding Acts 2.37. So likewise there can be no effectual illumination until there has been divine quickening. For a dead soul can neither see nor feel in a spiritual manner. In this order, then the Spirit draws souls to Christ. He brings them from death unto life, shines into their minds, applies the light to their conscience by sexual conviction, wounds and breaks their hearts for sin and compunction, and then moves the will to embrace Christ in the way of faith or salvation. These several steps are more distinctly discerned in some Christians than in others. They are more clear to be traced in adult convert than those who are brought to Christ in their youth. So, too, they are more easily perceived and such are drawn to him out of the state of profaneness than those who have the advantages of pious education. Yet in them, too, after conversion, they exercise their hearts following a period of declension and backsliding correspond there to, but in this order the work of the Spirit is carried out ordinarily and all, however, it may differ in point of clearness in the one and the other. God is a God of, uh, of order, both in nature and in grace, though he be tied down to no hard and fast rules. By his mighty work of illumination and conviction with humiliation which is brought in the soul, Spirit effectually weaves the heart forever from the comfort, pleasure, satisfaction, or joy that is to be found in sin or any other creature, so that his soul can never be quiet and contented, happy, or satisfied to find the comfort of God in Christ. Once the soul is made to feel that sin is the greatest of all evils that sires for him the things of the world, he has lost his deep relish for them forever. And nothing is now so desirable unto him as the favor of God. All creature comforts have been everlastingly marred and spoiled. And unless he finds comfort in the Lord, there is none from him anywhere. Therefore, behold, I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. Hosea 2.14 When God would win his church's heart to him, what does he do? He brings her into the wilderness that is into a place which is barren, the void of all comforts and delights. 
and then there he pleases comfort to her, and thus too he deals with the individual. A man who has been effectually convicted by the Spirit is like a man condemned to die. What pleasure would be derived from the beautiful flowers of murderer was led through a lovely garden, the place of execution. Nor can any spirit, a hyphen, convicted sinner, find contentment in anything till he be assured the favor of him who has so grievously offended. And none but God can speak comfortably to the one so stricken. Though God acts as a sovereign, does not always shine in the same conspicuous way in the hearts of all his children. Nevertheless, he brings them all to see light in his light, to know and feel that there could be no salvation from them but the Lord alone. By the Spirit's powerful, illuminating and convicting operations, a sinner is made to realize the awful disparity there is between God and himself, so that he feebly cries, How can a poor wretch like me ever stand before such a holy God? whose righteous law I have broken in so many ways, and whose ineffable majesty I have so often insulted. By that light, the convicted soul eventually is made to feel its utter inability to help itself or take one step toward the attainment of wholeness and happiness. By that light, the quickened soul both sees and feels there could be no access to God. No acceptance with him save for the person and blood of Christ, but how to get that Christ the stricken soul knows not. And I will give her vineyards from hence in the valley of Achor for door of hope, Hosea 2.15. Such is the comforting promise of God to the one whom he proposed to lure or win into himself. First he hedges up the sinner's way with thorns, Hosea 2.6 piercing his conscience with the sharp arrows of conviction. The second, he effectually battles all his attempts to drown his sorrows and find satisfaction again in his former lovers. Verse 7, third, he discovers his spiritual nakedness and makes all his mirth to cease. Volumes 10 and 11. Fourth, he brings him into the wilderness. Verse 14, making him feel his case, his desperate Indeed, and then when all hope is gone, when the poor finds, sinner finds there is no salvation for him, the door of hope is hoping for him, even in the valley of Acor, trouble, and what is that door of hope but the mercy of God? It is by putting into his mind thoughts of God's mercy that the Spirit supports the fainting heart, the convicted sinner from sinking beneath abject despair. Now it is that the Blessed Spirit helps his affirmities with groanings that cannot be uttered in the midst of a thousand fears he is moved to cry. God be merciful to me, a sinner, but we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God, Acts 14.22. True alike the initial entrance in the kingdom of grace and the ultimate entrance in the kingdom of glory. The Lord heard the groaning of the poor Hebrews in Egypt and had respect Unto them, Exodus 2, 23 and 25, nevertheless, he saw it was good for them to pass through yet sore trial. Before he delivered them, the liberal was present to them, and hope was kindled on their hearts, Exodus 4, 29 31. Yet the time appointed for their exodus from the house of bondage had not been arrived had not yet arrived, and why was the deliverance of the Hebrews delayed after Moses had been made manifest before them? Why were they caused to experience yet more so the enmity of Pharaoh? Ah, the Lord would make them to feel their impotency as well as their wretchedness, and would exhibit more fully his power over the enemy. So it is very always, so it is very often, if not always, experienced a quick and soul. Satan is now permitted to rage against him with increased violence and fury. Zechariah 3 1. The devil accuses him of his innumerable iniquities, intensifies his remorse, seeks to persuade him that he has committed a part of all sin, assures him he has transgressed beyond all possibility of divine mercy. tells him his case is hopeless. 
and my reader were this poor sinner left himself, the devil would surely succeed in making him do as Judas did. Here. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Well, you all have a good day and don't eat too much candy today. <laughs> oh, boy, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good Lord being in the matter. <laughs>